Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another episode of Deep Sea to Geek. My name is Jason, I am your host on this show, and before we dive right into it, I want to make mention that yes, again, it's a very long episode, so if you want to skip to a section that you want to see first, be it the gaming news, what I'm playing, or my opinion piece, you can go into the show description down below and there will be chapter headings for those sections and little timelines that you can click on that will take you right to that section. Alright, so now that you know the rules, Let's get on with it, with the gaming news of the week. Alright, so to start off the gaming news, I'm going to talk about the biggest, biggest thing that happened this week first, okay? They announced uh, on Thursday at a uh, PlayStation 4 launch special, uh, not only are you going to be able to play as uh, uh, the old 8-bit, or not 8-bit, I guess, 16-bit, is it 16-bit? Whatever bit the PlayStation was, <laughs> you're going to play as that version of Solid Snake for a special mission that's only available on PlayStation. So that was kind of cool. But the biggest news was that they showed a little teaser trailer, which didn't show a lot, just panning across a map and a voiceover for the next Uncharted game coming on PlayStation 4. I'm so excited! I love Uncharted, I love Naughty Dog, so anything coming from those guys, you know it's going to be amazing. And quite frankly, PlayStation needs a couple of games that really tote, you know, why you need to buy a PlayStation 4. So Uncharted, woohoo! I can't wait. No release date or anything like that, but I'm willing to bet anything that the VGA Awards, we're going to see a trailer of gameplay and how it looks and maybe hear Nathan Drake's voice again. Who knows? Uh, next up, there have been a lot of release date announcements, or at least release windows, I should say. Uh, checking out the earliest one we could possibly expect, expect, yo, <laughs> don't know why I'm talking like that, uh, is uh, a game that was on Kickstarter not too long ago, you might have remembered it if you checked that out, uh, called Republic. Uh, it was a really cool sounding game where it's, uh, it's an iPad or tablet game where you essentially take on the role of Otacon from the Metal Gear Solid series. Not literally, just in that kind of role, uh, where you'll be directing your secret agent through, like, secret, uh, like, camera devices and security systems and hacking devices, all with on uh, your tablet there to kind of guide them through where they need to go. So the concept sounded pretty cool and looks really badass for a tablet game. So keep your eye out for that. That should be coming this December. Uh, next up on the calendar list was a possible spring release for the indie title Among the Sleep. Now, if you've not heard of this game, it's pretty much uh, your typical first-person uh, atmospheric horror game where you are embodied, uh, you embody a small infant child that kind of goes around your home at night, uh, putting blocks up, trying to get to new places and new levels and everything like that. But all the time, there's something supernatural going on in the dark. So it looked like a new spin on the kind of survival horror kind of thing. So it looked cool too, just to be like this baby walking around and spooky shit happening all over the place. So definitely check that out when it comes uh, around. And last but not least, whoops, I skipped all my notes. Uh, is that March 18th, we are finally going to say the long overdue uh, Final Fantasy X and Final Fantasy X-2. So that would be 12 in any other kind of English, but it's a sequel to 10. So they're getting the HD remake uh, upgrade there, and it's going to be released March 18th, of course. I can't wait for that because I'm a big fan of Final Fantasy X. Don't care so much about X2, but whatever. And uh, yeah, so there you go. Bunch of games coming our way. <sighs> Something to get excited about. Uh, next up on the gaming's... Uh, docket here, uh, the news, uh, there was a study done, let me bring it up here just so I don't screw this up, there was a study done recently uh, that say games definitely don't harm kids, okay, well, I know, it's a concept, it's craziness, but the, the, uh, the test overall, or the study I should say, took over 10 years, uh, it had 11,000 children participate in it, uh, and it found no association between playing video games from as young as five and mood or behavioral problems later in life, okay? Uh, keep in mind, this test was done in the UK, okay, where the history comes from. And 
So it, it's telling about their culture, for sure. You know, definitely uh, UK uh, children are not affected by this kind of media. Now, it doesn't go into detail from the article I've read, just the article, where uh, it doesn't detail, like, were they playing uh, sports games? Were they playing, you know, Call of Duty all that time? You know, so you got to consider over the past 10 years what games have been coming out and what games did they expose to kids? You know, did they expose, like, you know, Manhunter or something to kids, you know, you would expect, like, if it was a test from, like, childhood age onwards, they would get games that are geared towards that age demographic. I don't think you'd sit some five-year-old just for the sake of a test and put him in front of, like, Grand Theft Auto and see what happens, like, ten years down the road. That seems a little unethical. But, nevertheless, they did studies on that. That was part of it. They did it on uh, television, movies, the whole gamut kind of thing of video media all right so another thing to point out is that it's done in the uk and it's not done in north america okay so i think what that study may show depending on the type of content that was exposed to these kids uh is two things number one it'll show the difference between the countries okay uh how they absorb their media and how we as north americans absorb our media okay uh, also taking into account like the amount of violent crimes in the UK and the amount of violent crimes in North America, and you got a bit more studying to do. It's great. It's a push in the right direction, you know, to kind of get out of this kind of black cloud that gaming is under right now, where it's like, oh, it just causes people to be psychos. Well, no, maybe not. Maybe if you take that one portion out of it, maybe you step a little bit closer to finding out what the real trigger is in these violent things. And video games doesn't seem to be one of them. I hate to say it, because that's the second time I've done this show and mentioned some study that debunks the whole thing, all right? Anyway, if you want to check that out, uh, I found it on IGN, so you can go there, and I think they do have a link to the actual uh, study done in the university. Uh, let's see, what else am I forgetting? Oh, here we go. Uh, next up on the gaming news... The 2013 VGA, now called the VGX, because they are so hip on Spike Channel, uh, they announced their nominations, all right? So every year, we all know, there's the big video game event, which is kind of like the MTV Awards for video games. Uh, I personally think the DICE Awards are more important, but that's just me. I'm a nerd that way. Uh, so they announced their nominations, uh, and the show is going to be sometime in December, I want to say? Coming up soon, anyway. Uh, and I have a bit of a beef to kind of pick with these nominations. Um, I think they're all deserving, you know, that's, that's for sure. Um, and I'm really excited that uh, Studio of the Year, uh, which is kind of like, you know, Best Director <laughs> category for uh, the Academy Awards. Uh, they included the Fulbright, com uh, Fulbright Company, which was the developer behind Gone Home. <laughs> it didn't get a Game of the Year nomination, which is kind of sad, but kind of expected at the same time. But for it to get a nomination like as a developer, that's impressive. Uh, I won't go through them all, but I will say uh, the Game of the Year choices here, because this is what <laughs> this is the bone I have to pick. Uh, Bioshock Infinite, Grand Theft Auto V, Super Mario 3D World, The Last of Us, and Tomb Raider. All pretty decent choices right there. Now, my beef comes from two things. Uh, one little thing, Tomb Raider. There were so many other games that were more critically acclaimed than Tomb Raider. And even if you kind of chunked it in there because it was like a big financial success. Well, apparently Square Enix doesn't think it's a financial success. So I know a lot of people loved it. I didn't really get the deal with it too much. Um, but I digress. I, I don't know why Tomb Raider made it on the list, personally. But the big one I really don't understand is Super Mario 3D World. As of this recording, as you're watching this, okay, Super Mario 3D World has not been released yet. How do you nominate a game and plunk it in best of the year category when it's not even out there yet? This happens all the time at the Golden Globes, okay? They'll see like 
Uh, there was that one year where Johnny Depp and Angelina Jolie made some piece of crap movie, and it got nominated for Best Comedy of the Year before it even hit theaters, like a month before it even hit theaters. And then it came out, and everyone said it was a big stinking turd, and then it was up for nominations for like Best Actor, Actress, and Best Picture for a Comedy. And it's like, who, who, who are seeing these movies, you know, before? And I think they're so great, you know? So I wonder about the Super Mario 3D World thing. I don't doubt that uh, it will be a great game. I can't really remember a bad Mario game. Um, but it just feels like they thought, hmm, we need to at least have one Wii U game just to justify its presence in the gaming market. Uh, to that I say, Rayman Legends, anybody? You know, I heard nothing but great things about that game. Uh, and it was highly praised critically and commercially, so why wasn't that on the list? I don't know. Anyway, uh, most of the other uh, ones, they're to be expected kind of nominations. I do have my favorites, but I will talk about that in another future episode. And last but not least in the gaming news is more of a personal note. I have an announcement to make. I got a new tattoo. Ah! It was a long time coming. I usually get one after every major trip that I take. And uh, I wanted to get something that kind of complemented the entire past year that I've kind of gone through and uh, kind of, you know, have something geeky and gaming in nature. So, this is what I got. If you don't recognize that, I'll put your brain at ease. Final Fantasy VIII, all right? So that's what I have on my left calf right now. I'd show you in person, but it's kind of a yoga thing that I got to do to get it right in the camera, and it's kind of painful still because I'm a wuss. But uh, yeah, my first gaming tattoo, probably not going to be my last. So there you go. That's the gaming news of the week. Now we're going to move on to what I'm playing. My head is going all over the place. So there were more than a few games, well, only a few games, I should say, that I did get to try out this week. Uh, one I played full, uh, the other two were just kind of samples of the games. Uh, so before I get into the full-length discussion for one particular game, I'll talk about the shorter ones. Um, after finishing Batman Arkham Origins, I sat back and I thought, okay, I'm gonna try and tackle a game that's in my back catalog that I've been meaning to get to for a long time. And so the game I picked was, I was gonna bring up the box, yeah, I'll bring up the box. Meh. Off camera for a second, sorry about that. So professional. Uh, the game I finally cracked open was Nino Kuni. Can you even see that? Is it in the shiny light? Let's go like this. Nino Kuni. Do, 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 do. So, enough of that, Jason. <laughs> Jeez. So, I finally cracked open the game. W literally, I bought it day one, okay? I pre purchased the game and I went in day one, picked it up, brought it home, was determined to play it. Didn't get around to it until last week. I literally took the wrapping off the package last week, okay? And uh, nothing against the game. I, I love Studio Ghibli films. I've watched pretty much all of them. Uh, their themes, their just their artistic vision is incredible. So combine that with Level 5, the guys who made the Professor Layton games, and it was going to be something incredible. I knew it. But... <laughs> I think I played, I, I don't know if it was an hour or two hours into the game, where you just get the basic idea of like how to control everything, and you get introduced to the main character and his real life world and everything, and you get to see a lot of the, uh, the animation that uh, Studio Ghibli provided. And I don't know what it was, but it was just a little too geared towards the younger audience. You know what I mean? Like, I've watched some of their films like Princess Mononoke, uh, Spirited Away, uh, Grave of the Fireflies. All these movies have really dark elements to it and very uh, adult. Not not in the adult sense, like, ah, oh, here are my boobs, you know, but adult in the sense that adults can appreciate it and kids can just enjoy the show, you know? Um, so I was expecting a little more that. This is a little more... Uh, like, they're, they're children's fantasy tales. Like, uh, what was the one? They had one that was kind of a, a retelling of A Little Mermaid, and it was very child-oriented. Uh, they have The Borrowers. I think that's another example. Uh, even My Neighbor Totoro, you know? Like, those, those movies are geared towards the very young audience. 
And when I go through some of the dialogue of these people, it's, it makes me cringe, you know, and just some of the over the top, like, oh, okay, let's go do this. You know, it just, it, it felt a little fluffy to me, you know? So I wasn't right into the game from the get go. And <laughs> sure enough, right when we were supposed to transport into the actual game world, that's when I lost interest. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to fall asleep. I need to play something more interactive. So. It didn't grab me right off the hop. Maybe the actual gameplay, uh, from what I hear, is amazing, and that will grab me, but my first initial impression, just from the very little bit that I played, not too impressed with Nino Kuni. But I am going to give it another chance. Don't worry. Uh, the next game up on the list was... This one! Assassin's Creed 4! Yes! Black Flag! And there was a very specific reason that I bought this game, uh, but I will get into that later. Uh, the game specifically, what can I say about it? I haven't played an Assassin's Creed game since Assassin's Creed 2. I have Brotherhood and uh, Omnibus 69, Dino, he was nice enough to gift me a copy of Assassin's Creed 3. I think I'm going to stay from Assassin's Creed Revelations. I heard not too many good things about that. But Brotherhood is supposed to be awesome. Dean said the more he played it, the more he loved Assassin's Creed 3. Um, and this seemed like... A departure from the whole series like my big concern I'm a story guy so I was concerned that jumping into four I was gonna miss out on a bunch of story details that were uh, very important to kind of have in reference to this game from what I understand so far in the game that's not the case because the big thing was the whole you know Desmond and the animus and the conspiracy theory there and that was gonna try trail over into this one well, when I started the game, uh, the Animus stuff is still there, but they've kind of done a fourth wall breaking kind of idea where the Animus is now a video game company, hmm, much like Ubisoft, who they apparently partnered with to create a video game series called Assassin's Creed Liberation, which was the Vita game. And so from then on, they've had people come in and try and trace the roots and everything like that of their ancestry and played in video game style. So it's kind of bending in a weird kind of way there. Uh, I did hear mention of Desmond in the thing, so I think it might play out a little bit, but I don't think it's as important to play the previous games when you're jumping into this. Uh, especially seeing as how it doesn't seem like the main character, uh, Kenway, I forget his first name, um, he doesn't seem to really have a connection directly in line with Desmond. I could be wrong about that. I know he's supposed to be the grandfather or great-grandfather of the father of the main character in Assassin's Creed 3, if you follow that. Um, but I don't think it's as important to play that. And especially since this predates chronologically Assassin's Creed 3, um, I think I could play this and jump into 3 and have even more of an idea or more of a, a timeline kind of idea for that game. But anyway, that's just story stuff. Playing it. Oh my god, I forgot how much fun these games are, all right? Uh, usually I like to dive right into the storylines and get that done and then go fishing around and do side quest stuff if I like. But oh my god, I love the side quest stuff in this game. There are treasure maps you can go around collecting. There are, of course, like you get to the highest peak in the game and you get to overlook the map and things pop up and there's more things to do. I love doing that and diving off is still fun as hell. Uh, assassinating guys, like, saving pirates and everything like that from, like, uh, the colonial guys, uh, doing assassination missions in stealth mode. I freaking love stealth games. Oh, my God. If any of you know a stealth game that I've possibly not played, please tell me in the comments section, because I will eat it up. Um, the game is beautiful. Uh, uh, the naval combat, I was kind of worried about, because I heard you could do something similar to that in Assassin's Creed 3, then they quickly announced Assassin's Creed 4, which is all pirate-themed, and I thought, well, is this the game they really want to make in the first place? If so, thank you, because it is a great game. Um, keep in mind, I've only played with, like, maybe two or three hours at the most, and most of that is just side quest stuff, because I, I just love doing that stuff. It's so crazy fun. Um, I don't think I'm going to do all of them. Like, there was a quest where I have to go find this, like, secret piece of paper and that'll unlock certain things. I don't really care about that. But the buried treasure stuff, that's fun. Because it's, it's really like finding buried treasure. You really have to find, like, on a map what part looks like this and it's all good. Uh, assassination um, missions I can't get enough of. Uh, just one-on-one -on -one combat so I get the flow of everything. That's all fun. 
And it's it's just a gorgeous looking game. The color palette in this game is so wide. It's it's not like uh, like the sandy kind of color of the originals. Uh, it's not like your typical like gray and death and stuff like of your apocalyptic kind of movies or anything like that. It's got so much vibrant color to it. It's just it looks like hyper color. You know, it looks like a Tony Tony Scott film. You know, where it's just everything is really sweaty and oversaturated in color. It's beautiful that way. <laughs> so that's Assassin's Creed Four, and I will get into why I bought this particular copy in a little bit. The last game I want to talk about is Brothers: A Tale of Two Sons. Holy crap, people! This game is unbelievably cool all right what can i start off with saying uh let me take a quick look at my notes here <laughs> right um so one of the big things is and i don't have it with me oh i'll just grab hold on and he's back because he prepares for his shows all the time yes i'm awesome that way the big thing with it and i know this is a playstation controller um uh, is that um I, I bought it on PC, but I was determined to play with a controller. So I had my uh, Razer controller and everything. And the only reason I wanted to do that instead of keyboard and mouse is because I heard the way they designed it with controller is so cool. And they are so right. Because essentially, you've got one, two, three, four, and the sticks. That's it. All the face buttons, all the D-pad stuff, it doesn't play into the game at all, okay? So essentially, it's a co-op game made for single player. I know, it's weird. But essentially, you have two brothers. This one controls the older brother. This one controls the younger brother. Your older brother, younger brother. Seems easy enough, right? But man, the things that they come up with, like the, uh, the co-op kind of um, puzzles and challenges and how you need to work in tandem to kind of work it. I don't know why someone hasn't done this in, like, forever, ever, if that, you know? I don't know a single game that has ever done that. Um, they're probably out there, I just never played them, okay, or I've never heard them, because if it was a big thing, uh, it would have been a gaming technique used all down the line, but this is genius. It's so simple and so brilliant at the same time. Uh, so the controller system alone was incredible to just kind of play that and go oh man this is now this is unique and interesting and innovative and then by the time you get to the end of it really literally at the end of the game the control mechanics become something of an emotional attachment i won't get into too much detail because i think that's uh an experience every gamer should have but it is definitely an experience that almost made me cry with a controller, okay? <laughs> That's saying a lot, okay? If that sounds very weird and corny, no. Try the game, try the controller, and get to the very end. It's not a long game. It's only like uh, two and a half, three hours at that. You can do it in one sitting, um, and that'll hit you hard. Uh, the entire game was an emotional roller coaster, which is impressive for uh, a game that... It's almost a Charlie Chaplin-esque game uh, where I, the main characters, they're not speaking English. They're emoting through like the inflections in their voices and their uh, actions on screen. Other than that, you don't hear the actual dialogue. You're just kind of mimed what is going on. Uh, the themes and everything that they go with, they are a little on the depressing side but they do pack a wallop. The only bad thing I'll say about that is I think they went a little too long with it. Right at the very end of the game, it just felt like, okay, I get it, it's sad, oh, can we get on with it, you know? Give me something that is just gonna, like, bring this out of its slump, you know? Um, but that didn't take away from the overall game itself, which was amazing. Uh, Graphic-wise, it looks cartoonish, and you'd be surprised because in the opening credits you see that it was created using the Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine being famous for games like Gears of War and Batman uh, Arkham games. Uh, so you know, hyper detailed stuff and like overbound muscly dudes. Um, but what they've done with this game is they've kept it scaled to a very 
grim fairy tale kind of look, you know, just uh, uh, almost like uh, plasticine kind of models in a way. But what they've used the Unreal Engine to different degrees is with the scale of everything and the color and the world and the atmosphere. So they haven't really focused too much on like the realism of it, but the grand scale that the Unreal Engine is capable of. And that is something that I think a lot of developers don't really concentrate on. Um, I've had this argument with a, a buddy of mine, which I might save for another Deep Sea to Geek topic, actually. So I won't get into it now. <laughs> Teasers. Uh, what else can I say about the game? Um, yeah, just... It really, literally was like a grim fairy tale come to life, you know? Uh, you think you're going about just this tale like getting from point A to point B and then all these creatures kind of come out and all these like folklore kind of things come out and it's just there are so many little gameplay moments too that just make you go oh my god this is gaming joy all right and I can't remember the last time I had a game that made me feel just this overwhelming urge to laugh and grin from ear to ear and then in the next second it will just make me like you know, just well up with tears. You know, it's such an emotional roller coaster. A fantastic game all around. I can't recommend it highly enough. Um, and I know I say this a lot now, but there are so many good games coming out in th these last few months that you'll probably hear me talking about Brothers come the end of the year when it's time to talk about games of the year. All right. So there you go. Those are the games I've been playing. Now we're going to go on to my main topic, which does include Assassin's Creed 4. Oh, yes. So, the time that I'm recording this is November 20th, and if you know that date, you know that this past week there was a really big event that happened. If you don't know what I'm talking about, let me give you a hint. ta -da! That's right, I bought a PS4. Ah, so now you're going to hear my initial thoughts on the system itself. Uh, what can I say? There are a lot of good things about it, there are a lot of bad things about it. Do I regret my purchase? No, not at all. Uh, what I do regret is the fact that I didn't come to reality with the system. What I mean is uh, I should have realized it is a launch system. That means there are going to be so many things that were talked about that aren't ready yet. Uh, there are just the basic kind of things that are in the system that aren't where you wish they were. Uh, and the games that you have to play, they're not the ones you wish were the launch lineup titles. But without a doubt, I still don't regret purchasing it. I think it's going to be one hell of a system. Uh, so let's break it down here. The actual console itself. I didn't think the aesthetic of the console was going to be a big thing to me, but man, I'm looking at it right now, and damn, it looks good in my system here. It's, it's a good looking machine. Uh, and the cool thing about it, which I didn't know about, was when you turn it on, there's like an LED strip that goes down the center of it. It lights up like a freaking Cylon. It's very, very cool. So it is a good looking machine. <clears throat> that said, uh, when you start up the system, it plays music, which is funny because the guys I've talked to that have bought a PS4 as well, that's the one thing we always go to. We're like, damn, that music they played right at the beginning? That's nice, you know? It gives you just like this chill kind of vibe before you get into killing things, you know? It's awesome. Um, what else can I say about it? The load times for everything seem to be very, very quick. Uh, compared to the PS3 days, oh, anything was faster than that. Like trying to download and upload a game on that thing, was stupid long. Um, it's not exactly up to speed with something like my Steam account where uh, I think I do like, they max out at around six megabytes per second. It's nowhere near that, but it's pretty damn quick. Uh, I think I downloaded something that was about 20 gigs and it took about half an hour, 40 minutes maybe. So that is leaps and bounds above what the PS4 was capable of doing, or PS3, excuse me. I'm so excited about it. Um, some of the bad things about the console, uh, it's user interface. Uh, I don't know why they went with this, but pretty much whenever you start up the game, there's all these icons that uh, show you like the games you've got, 
uh, the video content that you can do, the apps, uh, the music settings, which is weird because they can't play MP3 right now, so I don't understand what that's all about, um, and so on and so forth. But the kicker is, is that every time, like say you want to go to settings, you hit the settings, jump out of it, want to go back to your game. Well, now settings is at the beginning of the queue. And then you play Assassin's Creed, and then it'll go to that queue. And if you go play something else, it'll queue it, you know, so everything is always a mix match. Nothing is where it's supposed to be forever, you know? I don't like that. Like, I, I really like the user interface or the cross-media bar on the PlayStation Network. Um, where, it, or the PlayStation 3. I'm going to be jumping like that all over the place. Uh, where everything was, like, categorized, you know? Like, if you want settings, brr, there they are. If you want your games, brr, there they are, you know? I, I don't know why they did away with that. I mean, if you press up, you can see that old-school uh, media bar there. So why they didn't incorporate that with the main kind of hub is beyond me, because this random shuffle thing is weird. And I don't have very many uh, people on my uh, friends list right now. Um... But from what I've heard, those that do have a lot of friends, it's the same thing. It's just randomly categorized. And I think it bumps everybody up the more you contact them and everything. So nothing is organized on the user interface. So it's just kind of basically there as a, a placeholder until they figure out what they want to do. So that's, that's kind of crappy. Um, other than that, not a lot of the apps uh, that they were talking about are on the system just yet, but that could be said about every console, you know. That's what I mean when I said uh, I didn't prepare myself for this, because you hear about all the cool things that are going to be capable on the PS4, and you think, oh, day one, I'm going to be able to do all this. But that's never been the case for PlayStation 3, that's never been the case for PlayStation 2 even, or Xbox or Xbox uh, 360. And it's not going to be the case for Xbox One either, because I'm hearing news that Twitch isn't even going to be available on uh, the Xbox One day one. Um, so some of the features that aren't there, I'm kind of disappointed in. I won't get uh, into too much detail. But I did get a chance to try out uh, some of the features that were kind of cool to me, like uh, the share function which was super crazy easy, okay? Once you install, uh, not install, but once you update uh, your Facebook status and everything, uh, or your information onto your PlayStation 4, it is really as easy as hit share, what do you want to do, video picture, okay, you want to do a screenshot, okay, what do you want to write about it, you type that in and whoosh, away it goes. And it was there the second after, like my, my Facebook got updated like the second I sent it out there, so it really works. Um, I haven't done any video stuff yet just because most of my video stuff I do on here on YouTube um, and I don't think a lot of my Facebook friends really want to see like random gameplay footage just for the sake of testing it uh, so I haven't tried that yet and I haven't had the inclination to do anything yet I might down the road just because I want to see how fast the upload times are there uh, what the quality is on the other side but I'll keep you guys updated there but so far, I'm impressed with the share function. That's pretty cool. And uh, once they finally get integration for YouTube, uh, it'll be even more uh, essential for my gaming. Um, but that is the system. How does it run? Good. Just good. Awesome. <laughs> um, it's not a loud system, if that's a concern to anybody. It's never been a concern to mine when I'm playing games. Uh, yeah, that's that. Now we're going to jump on to the controller. This bad boy, I just, oh my god. I didn't think, you know, you never think about the things that you wish were different until you see the changes, or you feel the changes, I should, I should say. I just, I'm talking like I'm drunk and I don't even drink. So here's an old school PlayStation 3 controller, which has been pretty much the standard since PlayStation 2. And here's the new guy. Now if you look, let's try and line it up. You can already tell, like, those can those handles there, man, those are big beasts, man. Like, holy crap, that's, yeah. Um, and I gotta say, I didn't realize that holding the PlayStation 3 controller, if you can see, like, right here, it digs right into your hand when you hold on to it. I didn't notice that being a problem until I got my hands on this guy, and I realized, holy crap, 
that's almost my entire hand right there, and it feels so good. Like, the, the 360 controller was really cool, and it was bulky and everything like that, but this one just feels like it contours to me perfectly. Um, I didn't think the triggers were a big deal until I found the concave thing, and this just feels so, so right. Uh, the indents on the thumbsticks, that's fantastic. Uh, the little speaker on the controller, uh, I don't think they've utilized it just yet with any of the games. I could be wrong about that, but um, if it's anything like the Wiimote and that speaker, I'm sure they'll do some pretty crafty things with it. Uh, there is no start or select button anymore, so I'm constantly fishing around like, oh, which one was it again to do that? And then I end up sharing something. Um... Not really, but whatever. Uh, the light bar, I really haven't found any use for it just yet, but I think that's more of a move functionality thing more than any. Uh, yeah, the buttons are the buttons. The D-pad is the D-pad. Uh, the PlayStation Home button. That's something really cool. Is that, remember in PlayStation 3, uh, and possibly Xbox, it's been a while since I played on Xbox, uh, but you'd have to like press the Home button, and it would take you to... like the settings and if you want to adjust your settings you'd have to exit the game and then do that and then you'd have to load up the game again nope that's gone so you hit that sucker and it goes right to the settings you can like adjust the tone or the volume or the graphics or anything like that or even turn off like uh achievements like dings or anything like that and then you go back to the game and it's right where you left off it's instantaneous you can go to the cross media bar and back just like that i think that is brilliant the one thing that really kind of stumped me as to why it's here is the trackpad. Going on the cross media bar, I didn't find too many things that were a compelling enough reason to have the trackpad. Uh, I should mention that yes, it's a track like that, but it's also uh, tactile as well, where you can push it and it's another button feature. Now, when Here's why I bought Assassin's Creed 4. Because you can do that digital upgrade thing, I bought Assassin's Creed 4 on PlayStation 3, then I had the digital uh, option to pay an extra $10 to get it on PS4, which was great because I want to test the download uh, speed of the PS4, and I want to do a little bit of a comparison. Um, and the cool thing was the PlayStation 4 comes with a voucher for $10 on the PlayStation Network. So essentially I got the PS4 version of Assassin's Creed 4 for free. Uh, so that was great. Um, but it was by accident I figured out what the heck the trackpad would be good for. So I'm going around in Assassin's Creed 4 and they have that little mini map in the corner there. And that was too dinky and I couldn't find, like I was hitting options and that would take me out of the game. Uh, I was hitting the PlayStation Home button, that would take me completely out of the game. Uh, share button, I didn't need to share that. Uh, so I was stumped as to where the grand map that I'm used to was until I accidentally missed the options button and hit the trackpad, which brought up this giant menu. I'm like, oh, well, finally, here it is. And what you can do is essentially like how you zoom in and zoom out on your iPhone or Android device where you pinch or zoom out. Uh, that's pretty much how you use it. And then you can move around on the map with the trackpad. It's not completely... 100% uh, it's kind of skittish but you can see where they're going with it and for a first stab at this kind of thing uh, yeah I'm not expecting too much I heard Killzone does it really well they they make use of it really well um, but I'm waiting for a developer that has always taken like Naughty Dog Naughty Dog has always been really good with uh, the motion control in the old PlayStation 3 controller they did something with that uh, what else did they do uh, there was something else they did with the controller, which is escaping my brain now. Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I, I kn with the announcement of Uncharted, I know they're going to keep up with like the motion control thing. They're going to do great things with that. And they will figure out a way to make this trackpad essential for gaming. So until I see that, I'm not too sold on the trackpad. But everything else about this controller, it feels good. It's got a good heft. It's got huge vibration going on. Uh, the concave triggers and the analog sticks, fantastic. The one big beef, and this will sound ridiculous, but the biggest beef I have with this system package is the charge cable for the controller. It's about that big, okay? Now, you can't see, but my TV 
is about 16 feet away from me, okay? This doesn't cover that, all right? So that's bad, PlayStation. That's a very, very naughty PlayStation, okay? You gave us an HDMI cable. Can you not just give us a cheap-ass little extended cord that goes like 25 feet? Is that too much to ask? You know, you know this is a console for home use, home theater systems. Who is sitting that close to their giant screen TV? Nobody! So, bad move on your part. But if that's my biggest beef, this is a pretty good system. And I'll leave it with that. I'll give you guys more updates as more things come out. Uh, I haven't tried too many of the apps or anything like that. Uh, I know there's Netflix and sports stuff and Crunchyroll, which is really cool. I downloaded it, but I haven't tried it out yet. Uh, so for all you anime fans out there, this is a really great thing. You can watch like entire seasons of anime shows on Crunchyroll, I think for free. If you have to pay for it on PS4, that's weird because you, you don't have to do that online. I'm going to check that out. I'll get back to you guys. <laughs> but yeah, that's my initial uh, thoughts on the PlayStation 4. Like I said, I'm playing Assassin's Creed 4, and that's on the PS4. It is unbelievably beautiful. Uh, it's I'd say it's on par with PC graphics and speed and fidelity and all that kind of stuff, but we'll see. I'm going to bring uh, my copy of uh, the PlayStation 3 version to my nephew's place, and we'll check it out on there, see if there is really leaps and bounds between that and the PS4 version. And other than that, I'll probably give you guys updates with more thoughts as I go through the system and kind of tinker around with a bit. And of course, you'll be hearing more about Assassin's Creed 4 as I go along. So without further ado, we're going to jump to some important information for you all. And then I'm going to say my goodbyes. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, guys, for watching this episode. But before you go, I do have some quick announcements to make, or at least one announcement. <laughs> I want to remind you guys that this coming Sunday, November 24th at 5 p.m., we're going to be doing our live Google Hangout. Uh, we've got Omnibus 69 coming in. We've got the Warrior Vagabond coming in, uh, if all things go according to plan. And... I think I've got confirmation that the Lord X is going to be joining us as well. And we're going to be discussing the new generation of consoles, the PS4 and the Xbox One, which will have released Friday before the show. So if you want to get in on that, you can send me a message and you can be on the show itself if you like, or you can watch and send us questions. We'll have guys monitoring uh, the questions and the message boards and everything. We'll be answering questions as we go along. So if you want to check that out, that's 5 p.m. North American Central Time, and we will see you then. Without further ado, thank you very much for watching this episode. If you dig this show and you want to see more of it, hit like, favorite it, share with your friends and family, spread the word that Deep Sea to Geek is out here because I love having viewers and hearing from all of you in the comment section. Which reminds me, if you have a comment, leave it down below in the section and subscribe as always because I'm going too fast. I'm too excited. Uh, we put out... I put out, I don't know what this we stuff is, it's all just me. Uh, I put out new videos every Wednesday, so come back next week and you will see a brand new show of Deep Seated Geek. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.